Welcome to Vector Solutions webinar on airports and safety management systems. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, today we're going to get started um, and our presenters are just going to um, introduce ourselves briefly um, and then we are going to dive right in and talk about the components of a safety management system. Uh, we'll provide just a brief overview of some of the Federal Aviation Administration's um, SMS rulemaking um, and touch on what folks might expect to see under the current administration. Um, and finally, we'll touch on building a business case for SMS solutions and review how, or <clears throat> review how airports can leverage our software to support their SMS. And with that, I will pass the baton um, to uh, my co-presenter, Scott Stone and Alex, and we will all just briefly introduce ourselves. Great, good uh, morning, afternoon, wherever you might be. Scott Stone, I'm a, a sales solution engineer <clears throat> with Vector Solutions. Relatively new with the company, been here for just over six months, but previous to that, I've been out in the, the safety world, so in safety management for 20 plus years, uh, managing safety programs and utilizing safety management systems um, and software solutions like Vector EHS, which we'll be talking to, to uh, today to help manage all of the, the safety data and, and all those things that, uh, that we have to deal with. So that's me. Thank you. Glad to be here. Hi, I'm Alex Brunges. I have been with Vector's LiveSafe platform, which is our risk management offering since early 2020. And I primarily focus on content creation and communications, as well as speaking during these webinars. So I'll be talking about some of the features of the LiveSafe platform and some use cases during this webinar. Hey, thanks, Alex. Um, and my name is Danielle Gatto. I'm a product marketing manager uh, with the Vector EHS management software. Um, and I've been working with the platform for about seven years now and um, looking forward to, uh, to getting started and um, let's, let's dive right in. I'm just going to provide just a, a short overview of who Vector Solutions is. Um, we're a leading, leading provider of software as a service based in enterprise learning, workforce management and performance improvement solutions. Uh, we help our customers to increase performance, reduce risk, and ensure compliance for improved operations. Uh, the company was founded in 1999, and uh, today we've got well over 2,000 customers um, and 19 million users of our software. Uh, so Vector Solutions offers three different uh, software platforms that can help airports implement and support a safety management system. Uh, first, uh, LiveSafe is a mobile risk management platform that's used for both inbound and outbound safety communication between employers and employees. Uh, this includes broadcast notifications uh, that can be sent out to all employees, as well as a timely and reliable reporting system that employees can use to submit questions, tips, concerns, um, and some other features of the software include customizable resource center, uh, one-touch access to emergency options, um, and two-way messaging between employees and security teams in real time. And then next, the uh, Vector EHS management platform uh, was developed to help uh, organizations manage their safety data and maintain regulatory compliance. Um, it's a robust software um, with several different uh, modules for incident reporting, claims management, inspections, hazard analysis, job safety analysis, and much more. And finally, uh, Vector LMS and our training management software provides one simple place for all of your training needs, uh, from assigning, tracking, and reporting on course completion, uh, to tracking training requirements, and identifying skill gaps. Uh, so to boil all that down, <laughs> we, uh, we help your organization train, report, respond, analyze, um, and engage. And with that, we will pass it over to Scott Stone. Uh, who will just provide a new view of the safety management systems. Great. Thank you, Danielle. I'll go ahead and, and uh, advance to the next slide. I'm going to run through an overview of the elements of a safety management system, or SMS. And uh, th this is a formal top-down approach, organizational top-down approach, to managing safety risk to assure the effectiveness of those safety controls that are, that are in place. 
and includes systematic procedures, practices, policies for the management of that specific safety risk. The four main components that you can see up there of an SMS are safety policy, safety risk management, safety assurance, and uh, the last one on there, safety pr uh, promotion. And they provide a means of defining the SMS within the FA FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, and a systematic approach to describing and achieving the, the desired performance. And this shouldn't be, I don't think, anything, um, anything new. Um, this has definitely been uh, around a while, uh, but also just OSHA, um, their safety management system, very similar. So, you know, like the four pillars, they have four, that's management leadership, worker participation, hazard ID and assessment, and then hazard prevention and, and control. So a little bit different naming convention and things, but when you get into it, a lot of the same practices, a lot of the same requirements. So after my, my overview of each one of these pillars or elements of the SMS, um, uh, Danielle and Alex are gonna go through some specific use cases on how some of our customers are utilizing our systems that Danielle just gave a high level overview of to meet some of these requirements. Next slide, please. So the first one we have is a safety policy. And a safety policy is an organization's documented commitment to safety. So this documented commitment needs to define those safety objectives and accountabilities and then the responsibilities of its employees and its leadership in, in regards to safety. Uh, policies have to be communicated uh, to all employees, responsible parties, uh, and understood by all these employees and, and responsible parties, and consistent with goals and objectives, uh, you know, that the organization has, and they have to be reviewed and kept fresh and relevant uh, to the organization. So it should be a living and breathing document. Um, also, they need to be well thought out. So uh, it's just not something that the uh, you know, the, the president or CEO or, or someone sits in their office and says, I think this is what our safety policy is going to be. It takes a lot of, a lot of input. It's a team effort and, and it really sets the direction, uh, you know, for the organization. And then just to get a little bit more specific, you know, the, the policy, and I talked about it before, but it has to establish clear safety objectives and that commitment to manage to those, uh, to those objectives. These outline the requirements and processes the organization will use to achieve the desired safety outcomes. Um, so, you know, things like, you know, the, as the, the fully documented policies and processes with employee access, the, the employees need to understand their roles within the SMS, uh, you know, having those policies and procedures available uh, to those employees with that understanding and competency because they, they do no good sitting in, in a binder in the back room in a shop somewhere, um, you know, collecting dust. The accountability uh, of management and employees measures, you know, have to be in place for employee accountability throughout all levels for not meeting their expectations. Um, not like, uh, not getting written up for getting injured, uh, you know, but maybe, you know, having a, a, a discussion with you for not following a process that you're trained in and you're competent in not, like not locking out a piece of equipment or failing to wear PPE, um, you know, things like that. Um, the, the safety management system also promotes the use of reporting systems. And they talk about this in the, in the details of the SMS requirements. You know, it, re it requires a common tool or system to track safety issues, including hazards uh, and risk mitigations. Uh, Vector EHS, uh, you know, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, provides this common platform to manage um, all that safety data in, in one place. Great, perfect. Uh, safety risk management, SRM. Um, applicable FAA organizations must establish a safety risk management system. Uh, many familiar terms like JSA, many are familiar with JSA, JHA, you know, nothing new here too. But the risk assessment you know, system provides for the initial and continuing identifications of hazards um, out there in, uh, in the work environment. At a minimum, it must include uh, you know, the following. First thing is an understanding of the processes um, you know, out there in the field, so involving the right people in this risk assessment. So maybe someone that's involved in a task, supervision, and then it goes into breaking down that task into the high level steps to identify hazards documenting those hazards and the effects that they can have and what risks they have. 
Uh, the third thing is analyzing the safety risk. So, you know, common method is determine, like shown here on the slide, the severity and probability. Um, you know, once you get those two, you can, uh, you know, figure out what the overall risk is and then determine if that risk is acceptable based on your standards. When that risk is not acceptable, to mitigate, to put controls in place, to lower that risk down to an acceptable level. Um, and then of course, have a way to track and monitor to make sure those things that you have implemented um, have stayed and uh, you haven't regressed back to the uh, you know the bad way of doing things. So S SRM, safety risk, big part of a, a SMS. That's quite, next, next slide, please. Safety assurance. Uh, you must establish and maintain safety assurance processes to ensure the elements of your program are meeting the intended, you know, performance goals and targets that you've set out. So you might have these goals and targets and all that. You have to have a way to evaluate to make sure that, that you're still on track. So, you know, it needs to evaluate the continued effectiveness of your control strategies. Um, you know, whatever you're, whatever you're controlling provides insight regarding the methods and opportunities for continuously improving safety. This comes from the, the data analytics piece of it. So information that you're collecting, what are you doing with that information? Making sure that you're utilizing it for improvement, getting down to the root cause analysis and using that data. Um, data collection analysis through audits and, and evaluations and, uh, and employee reporting. And then tracking completion, addressing the, the, the findings. So, Having a data collection system for when you're out conducting workplace inspections and audits or employee um, observations, a way to uh, not only collect that data, but to report on it, to make sure that, hey, we're doing the right inspections, the right observations, and we're acting on the information that we're seeing, uh, that we're seeing coming in. So a safety management system also requires that, again, you have an employee reporting system so a way for employee to report safety issues. Uh, Vector EHS has a great uh, hazard module where uh, any employee can go in there and submit unsafe conditions. It goes to a supervisory review, action is taken on it, and then that's communicated back to uh, back the, uh, the individual. The SMS also requires part of this assurance that you have an investigation process, a system to, to collect data and in investigate those incidents to control those risks. Again, Vector EHS uh, does have a full-blown incident module uh, for the whole life cycle of any type of incident. So it might be a, uh, you know, an injury, a near miss, a property damage, whatever that is, but it goes from the initial report to the investigation, to the root cause analysis, to assigning corrective actions, completing those corrective actions and, and closing the case out. Um, and then as all that, uh, you know, built within the system and the, the corrective actions tracking with assignments and, uh, and all those things. And then, of course, on the back end is all of the trending and analysis from all of that data that, that you're collecting. Um, the SMS also requires that you have an inspection and evaluation and, and auditing process that monitors these programs. Uh, again, uh, Vector EHS has the, the inspection systems and auditing systems and those employee observation processes built in so you can do those checks and balances to make sure that you're meeting those requirements of the safety management system. Next slide. Safety promotion. Uh, you must establish and maintain a safety promotion function, and this includes actions to create a positive safety culture within you know, all levels of, of the workforce. This uh, also includes providing safety training. You have to ensure the workforce has the necessary competencies to perform their duties, and also a way to track uh, compliance, you know, are they doing or not? And of course, an, an understanding, it's one thing to do training and check the box, but it's another thing to validate, uh, you know, their knowledge of, of the topic and, and to validate that. Vector uh, LMS system has extensive libraries with great knowledge checks and hands-on evaluations to help meet this requirement. Advocating strengthening a positive safety culture. That's part of a uh, safety promotion, uh, promotion. Culture consists of shared values, actions, and behaviors that demonstrate that commitment to safety. Um, you know, in the desired safety culture, people acknowledge their accountability and act on individually for safety. You know, individuals report, raise safety issues. They have to be able to do that without fear of reprisal. So if they, you know, fear of getting in trouble, you should uh, recognize folks for that when they identify an unsafe condition or see someone doing un something unsafe and having a safety conversation with it, they should not fear that the, that they're going to get in trouble or report a near miss. 
Um, you know, this should be, you know, report that from your miss, go through the entire investigation process, but an employee should not fear that, hey, I'm going to get in trouble for bringing these things in. You should welcome that. That's all part of that, you know, uh, you know, everyone's responsible for safety and, uh, you know, we need to, uh, we need to embrace that. Um, other things for, you know, uh, communication and awareness, everyone needs to know what's going on with the safety management system and their role. Uh, you know, example, uh, you know, training. If I'm assigned out to do a specific job, I should be able to go into a system or look at something and say, hey, I'm qualified and certified to be able to do this. Same thing with a supervisor. If I'm assigning work or a schedule or planner, there should be visibility to, hey, here's this training status and here's who competent to be able to do that specific task. Um, so that, that's also a big piece of, uh, of that element. Next slide. And then you go one more. So the, the FFA, FAA now uh, proposes, so there's a little background up there on the rulemaking um, for this in, in 2016 and, you know, kind of took a back burner here, uh, but it is a best practice in here. There's nothing, you know, crazy in here. You know, it's, it's very aligned with, like I said, like OSHA, things like that, but they now propose to require uh, the safety management system only for certain Certificated airport class airports classified as small, medium, or large hub um, airports in the national plan, and um, systems serving international air traffic or having more than 100,000 total annual operations. Uh, they also propose changing changes that would extend the implementation period of the safety management system from 18 to 24 months and then require submission of the implementation plan within 12 months instead of six months uh, that they originally uh, proposed in there. So that's uh, that's what I had, quick overview. Now I think it's over to Alex. Hey Scott, I'm actually gonna, gonna speak to this slide. Um, so this is just going to just be a, just a short overview of how um, software solutions can help you um, implement a safety management system. Um, you know, we've software solutions can provide improved communication and transparency. Um, employees can gain easy access to safety policies and documentation, um, and employers can easily inform workers of policy changes. Um, also, um, you know, it provides a, a really um, streamlined way to collect and analyze uh, safety data. Um, you can improve hazard assessments, conduct incident analyses and inspections, um, and dashboards and reports uh, can help airports to monitor safety performance over time. Uh, and furthermore, um, if you leverage um, an online training platform and LMS courses, uh, you can deliver, track, and analyze safety training throughout your airport's department, um, ensuring that your workers have the, the knowledge they need to do their jobs in a safe manner. Um, and finally, uh, it's a, a great way to increase employee involvement with your safety program. Um, you provide e employees with an easy and secure means to report safety hazards, concerns, incidents, issues, um, even the possibility to do so anonymously. Uh, and now we're just going to talk about a couple of use cases. Um, many of our customers within the aviation industry rely on our products to manage risks, uh, their safety data, and to deliver critical training to their workforce. Um, and we're gonna go over how airports can use our software um, in a little bit greater detail in the following slides. Uh, and now I am, oh, good. Oh, no, I was just gonna oh. say now. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so as Danielle mentioned, software solutions, one of the great ways that they can help in facilitating ongoing safety is by improving communication and transparency. And one way to do this is by making safety policies readily accessible to employees. An efficient way to do that is by making them accessible via their mobile device. And the Vector LiveSafe platform is a great tool for this. As I mentioned earlier, LiveSafe is Vector's risk management and safety communications platform, so it has a variety of features to facilitate ongoing safety and incident prevention. And one great feature is the resources section, which you can see here. So this allows airports to store safety policies, documentation, workplace guidance, or even state or local guidance in one centralized location for easy access by employees. And these resources can be uploaded in URL or PDF format. They are easily accessible and they can be organized and uploaded in whatever way you find to be most effective. 
So in this example here, you can see on the left the home screen of the resources section within the LiveSafe mobile app. There are a couple of different sections. You can see emergency procedures, human resources, CDC recommendations. And when you click on each of these, there can also be some subfolders. So on the right, you can see the emergency procedures section. And this has information about incidents ranging from tornadoes to utilities failures to winter weather concerns, as well as corresponding policies when you click on each of these. So this is a really great way to put workplace or state and local resources and guidance at employees' fingertips and ensure that they know where to look and what they need to know to effectively and safely perform their jobs and respond to any potential incidents. Okay, and now I'm going to talk um, just a little bit about how one of our customers um, is using Vector EHS management um, to support their SMS. Um, so um, Indianapolis Airport Authority um, is um, a major airport in the um, Indianapolis area. Um, it develops and operates six airports um, and averages about, you know, over 130 daily flights to 45 destinations um, on eight airlines. Um, and uh, they are currently using uh, Vector EHS Management's um, incidents uh, module, um, our JSA platform, um, inspections, hazards, uh, claims management, uh, corrective actions, uh, and they're also uh, heavily using our, our dashboard and reports. Uh, so the airport uh, just thought a better way to identify and resolve workplace hazards. Um, so they are leveraging our hazard. Um, and job safety analysis checklists um, to conduct JSAs for excavation work um, and outline safe work practices for um, tasks for involving changing airfield lighting. Um, they're using the software to, you know, identify controls, assess risks, um, even calculate residual risks of potential hazards that could come up during these tasks. So they're configuring and using our, our, our JSA checklist uh, to, to sort of um, really reduce and, and analyze their, their workplace risks. Um, and in addition, um, they are also using the software to conduct um, inspections and audits. Um, so they are really uh, streamlining their inspections of their, um, their terminals um, and work areas. Um, they're also conducting daily facility maintenance inspections. Um, and they're using our reports um, to really uh, drill down and, and identify and resolve deficiencies uh, before they can result in, in an accident or incident. Uh, and finally, uh, they also uh, saw a, a better way to just um, manage and, and analyze their uh, workplace incidents. Um, so uh, they're using our incident module and public web form, uh, which allows stakeholders to um, record and, and submit um, an incident uh, via a simple web link. Um, and uh, they're also leveraging our, our dashboard cost corrective actions module and some of our reports. Um, and uh, they have um, really gained significant insight into the root causes of, of some of their employee injuries, property damage, uh, vehicle and operations incidents. Um, within the first two years of their implementation of the software, uh, they significantly reduced workplace incidents by 74%. Um, and they also reduced OSHA recordable injuries and illnesses by 35%. Um, and uh, one way that they're they're kind of helping to resolve you know open issues is they're creating and link creating and linking corrective actions uh, to identify and just sort of resolve and close out um, any open issues that are um, involved in an incident. Um, and then. Um, we do have a variety of airport fire departments that are providing um, uh, aircraft rescue and firefighting uh, online training courses to their workforce uh, via the Vector Solutions LMS. Um, so they're um, delivered, delivering and managing video and scenario-based uh, training to their firefighters. Uh, they're tracking required training hours for each member in their departments, and uh, they're storing and accessing certificates of completion in, in one centralized location. Um, and, and as Scott said, they're just ensuring that their workers have the knowledge they need to carry out their tasks safety, or safely and efficiently. And uh, now I'm going to pass things over to Alex. 
So another relevant example of promoting safety with one of these software solutions is using a risk communication system such as Vector Live Safe in order to promote safety and identify any potential incidents facing your organization or any potential risks. So one example of this is a current Vector Solutions client is JFK International Air Terminal or JFK IAT, which operates in Terminal 4 of JFK in New York City. They have nearly 2 million square feet to cover over 12,000 employees and they serve more than 21 million passengers each year. So there is a lot of movement. It's a very dynamic environment with a variety of safety and security concerns. And, and for this type of an environment, the LiveSafe Alert or LiveSafe Enterprise options are a really great way to address, identify and address concerns. And I'll speak a little bit more about some of these key features that they offer, but off the bat, LiveSafe Alert is a package offering from the LiveSafe platform. It is an emergency mass notification system. So it's really focused on outbound communication from employers to their employees. And this is great for routine reminders as, as well as emergency alerting or guidance. And LiveSafe Enterprise is a bit more robust. It includes these EMNS features as well as additional functionality such as two-way communication and the resources section I showed earlier. So I'm now gonna talk a little bit in more depth about some of these key features that can be valuable here. And the first of that is tip reporting functionality. So this is one of LiveSafe Enterprise's core features. It's really a valuable tool, lowers the barriers to reporting. Um, so within the LiveSafe app, employees can submit questions, concerns, and reports about a variety of topics, including suspicious activity, facility hazards, workplace incidents, or any other concerns that they may have. And they can even choose to remain anonymous when submitting a tip if they would like, which we found to be a very valuable way to improve submission rates and to help organizations remain aware of any risks their workforce may be facing. And another great aspect of this feature is that once you do submit a question or concern, employees can actually engage in real-time two-way messaging with their security teams to address their issue. So this may be as simple as saying, thank you, we've received this, we will look into it. It may be directing an employee who had a question about a workplace policy to the relevant resource, or it may even be requesting further information about an incident so that it can be properly investigated. So this can help address a variety of concerns such as employee injury, property damage, other incidents in the workplace, and really make it easier for organizations to identify these concerns and address and adapt their corresponding prevention and response strategies. And another great feature that is the EMNS cat capability of both LiveSafe Alert and LiveSafe Enterprise. And again, this is emergency mass notification system functionality. So it's really about that outbound communication to employees about either regular updates or routine communications, as well as more emergency alerting and response guidance. So using this EMNS functionality, organizations can quickly and reliably communicate about hazards, guidance, policy updates. They can make these broadcast notifications really customized and adjust them depending on the channel that they're using to deliver them, whether it be email, SMS message, or push notification. These messages also um, offer dynamic audience targeting. So if you want to communicate with your entire workforce or a specific subset, that's an option. And another great component of this EMNS functionality is the check-in feature. So when sending messages, you are actually able to prompt employees to respond, typically whether they are safe or require assistance. So during an event such as a fire drill or an actual fire, you can send a broadcast check-in message that has evacuation information as well as a way for employees to indicate whether they need assistance. And this is great for helping you properly delegate security resources, ensure safety, um, and really understand what your employees need. And once you do send these messages, there is also comprehensive reporting and analytics. So you can assess message deliverability across all channels, identify if there are employees who may not be receiving messages, and observe the responses to those check-ins to ensure every, every point of issue is properly addressed. So this really facilitates effective, reliable, and instant communication, whether it be routine updates or an emergency response when those minutes or those seconds are really precious. Let me go to the next slide, Daniel. And this is just another look at those broadcast notifications. You can see on the left, it's a bit more clear of an image when you're developing the message to send out. You can choose the type of message, so the different delivery channels, the groups of employees receiving the message, as well as the content included, especially for, if specifically for each channel. So if you want to adjust the language, depending upon the delivery system, you can do so. 
And on the right, you can see what that message might look like coming into the LiveSafe app. If you do not have the app, you can also read these messages on a web browser, in your text, in your email. So it really ensures that that information is getting to employees when they need them. And these are just a few of the features that LiveSafe and other risk management platforms might be able to offer you, but there are definitely more safety features that can assist in prevention and response strategies. So if you're curious about more of LiveSafe's features or any of the other vector offerings we've discussed today, feel free to check out our website or reach out to any of us and we'd be happy to provide further information. Okay, and now I think we're just gonna open things up to questions. Uh, so if there's uh, anything that you'd like to ask uh, one of the presenters, uh, you can go ahead and use this webinar's uh, questions feature. Um, and uh, we'll just give a, a couple minutes to collect uh, some questions, and then we'll go ahead and, and start to, uh, to get some responses and answers going. Okay, so it looks like we have had um, a question come in. Um, one attendee was just curious as to where they could go to learn a little bit more information about our software solutions. Um, and they also wanted to know where they could go to just get a little bit more information um, on the um, SAA's um, uh, rulemaking. Uh, so I think I can answer that. Um, so uh, as Alex uh, just mentioned, uh, if there's anything that you'd like to know about our various uh, products, you can go to vectorsolutions.com uh, to learn a little bit more about the software uh, that we are offering. Um, and uh, if you are, are curious to learn a little bit more about some of the FAA's rulemaking, um, uh, we advise you to just go to their website. They've got um, a really comprehensive um, sort of FAQs um, and uh, just a lot of good information on the rulemaking and safety management systems. So those are um, some great resources for you to, uh, to check out. And I think that's uh, I think that's the only question that's come in. Uh, so um, as Alex said, don't be afraid to contact us uh, with any additional questions that you might think of. Um, we'll be happy to reach out to you. Um, but um, with that, uh, I think uh, we can wrap this webinar up a little bit early um, and give you all just a little bit time back in your day. Uh, but thank you all for attending. Um, and uh, hope you have a, a great rest of your afternoon.